A new study of otherwise healthy university-aged athletes reveals changes to brain structure and function associated with concussion, and it's seen in athletes who play both collision and contact sports. The research comes from Toronto St. Michael's Hospital. Nathan Churchill is a postdoctoral fellow in St. Michael's Neuroscience Research Program and the study's lead author. He joins me now. Nathan, good morning. Good morning, Marcia. So how did the range of sports affect the brain differently? What were the extremes at either end of the spectrum? Yeah. Uh, so the extremes, as you might expect, uh, range from people in non-contact sports, uh, in the case of our study, volleyball, where there's no direct body-to-body -body contact with the opposing team, uh, to full-on collision sports, such as football, uh, ice hockey, uh, male lacrosse, where collisions are a regular part of every game. How uh, could you have any type of damage to the brain if you're not having a collision? How does that happen? How could you have damage without a collision? Yes. Uh, I'll, I can't imagine there'd be any reason you'd expect brain damage. Um, so, uh, sorry, so I should clarify. So when we're talking about extremes, we're talking about differences here. Uh, we don't really have, you know, a, a, an ideal perfect brain that hasn't been exposed to anything. Uh, what we're interested in comparing is a non-contact sport where we know there's no reason to expect any of this kind of damage, uh, although there are the occasional concussions in volleyball, for example, they're quite rare. Uh, and then we want to compare that to a sport where we know they're getting routine, heavy body-to-body -body collisions. Uh, so it's more a matter of we're saying there are differences between non-contact sports, sports with intermittent contact, and sports with highly regular contact. Okay, gotcha. So this research was done by looking at white matter in the brain. Mm -hmm. What is that and what does it tell you about what's going on inside our brains? So uh, white matter is basically these long fiber bundles in the brain that connect the different areas of the brain, gray matter, uh, and mainly allow them to communicate between each other. So uh, intact connections are essential for the brain to function properly, and changes in the organization even of these white matter bundles can change how your brain functions. Uh, so what we saw in our study were changes in the structure and organization of the white matter. So it's not that there was explicit damage and disruption here, uh, as far as we can tell. It's more, it looks to be reorganization. Um, what we think is this might be a sign of the brain's remarkable ability to adapt under sports with more routine collisions. Hmm. Uh, but the key take home is there is a difference here in collision sports versus non-contact. What then are the ramifications for athletes, for people that are playing these sports and have that type of contact? Well, so I'd say the implications are there really is some sort of brain change going on uh, underneath the surface. Uh, but this has to be taken in context because these athletes are all very healthy, they're high functioning. I mean, these are elite athletes who are also university students uh, and none of whom are reporting health problems. So again, this sort of speaks to the brain's ability to adapt. These people are doing quite well in their day-to-day -day lives, but it does tell us that we can't completely dismiss any concerns. Uh, if the brain is changing, we might want to ask, what does two, three more years of contact uh, do to the brain? Uh, what does concussion do to change the brain? Uh, and, and look to the future and see what that might do for the long term. All right, Nathan Churchill, so much. So glad you are able to join us today. Appreciate your time. Thank you.